Welcome to the 34th episode of All the Books. Nights. The official podcast of the David A. Howe Public Library. Yeah, but Eric, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Are we currently in the David A. Howe Public Library? We're not. Ah. We're getting, I'd say we're getting a little bit too comfortable in this podcast lately. Yeah, you're right. What is this? We The, not last week, but the week before was yeah, a Nights we episode. Out. And here we are, you're we at are. the old uh, yeah. Casa de Gunning. Yeah. Casa de Gunning? I don't pro- know how it, Probably Casa. Casa. But. What's queso? Yeah. That's a cheese. Queso is a cheese. Yeah. yeah. Queso is a lady cheese. So that's different. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so we're so we're not at the library because Eric was out today. So here we are together, yeah. reunited. It wasn't out. It was a day off. A well yeah, earned day, day off. A well earned day. I'm not going to defend my no, work habits. No. 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 Uh, animals, stop it. Yeah. Man. Oh, you're going to wake my baby up. It's yeah, right. that'll it's be okay. great. We'll it's have him right. on the podcast. It's it's yeah, so, yep. This, <laughs> even though it doesn't sound like it, this is still the official podcast at the David A. Howe Public Library. Yeah. We talk about books, author news, literary events. Yeah, special segments. Lots of fun. Yeah. You know what we haven't done in a while? A Lonely Hearts Book Club. That's true. So we I don't know if again. we're going to do it next week, because i got a good idea. Well, we're, we're doing Westerns next week. Oh, darn it! Yeah, well, after that, you can have your good idea. Then we'll do a Lonely Hearts Book Club. Ugh. I suppose this is a good time to solicit your Western thoughts, because we're going to be talking Westerns. We want to hear your favorite authors. We want to hear your favorite books, what you like about the genre. Anything and everything in the Western genre, we want to hear from you. So yeah. if you're a Louis L'Amour fan, Zane Gray, who else we got? Larry McCullough, Larry McMurtry. Uh, whoever wrote Doc. And OK Corral. I don't, know, I don't know who wrote those. Can't remember. Robert Parker's got a lot. Robert of them. Parker. Anyway, so send us these. You can send it to him uh, on Twitter at, at All the Book Show, uh, Facebook. You can find us uh, just David A. Howe Public Library, or you can email us at Wellsville at yeah. And we're on SoundCloud and iTunes and YouTube. Yeah. That's oh yeah, right. you can leave comments on YouTube. Yeah, and we want people to rate us, right? Yeah. We need people to rate us and yeah. share. Yeah. With Even your if friends. it's a bad review. I mean, yeah. I don't want. If you have a bad review, keep it to yourself. Maybe con- I guess. contact us first and let us know. Give us <laughs> yeah. a chance to make it right. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Tell us what we're doing, what we can change. Yeah. It was suggested uh, not two episodes ago that we stopped talking about uh, comic books and graphic novels and stuff. Sure. And yeah. We haven't yeah. mentioned it at all. We haven't gone back. Yeah. No. So, uh, so what graphic novels have you been reading? Oh, I'm so thankful that you asked me that, Eric. <laughs> um, I recently finished uh, Teen Titans Volume 2 Rogue Targets, which is in our collection, yeah. new to our collection. Huh. It... Can I can I say sucked in this podcast? Yeah, I think okay. that's, we still have a clean rating. Okay, all right, it sucked. It was terrible. Yeah, I, you know what doesn't did. suck? What this clean rating? That's right. I know we're family friendly here at all the books. Yeah. Hey, you know what I love? Barney. Just kidding. That's so dated. Nobody even yeah. knows who Barney is anymore. Um, the do dinosaur. People, yeah. Do people still do? Is Barney still a thing? He's not, right? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have a kid. Okay. You have a kid. You yeah, know him better well, than I do. No, I don't think Barney's still going strong. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Teen Titans Volume 2 Rogue Targets. Not good. It's okay. not a good series. I'm sorry. Baby Bop was the green Triceratops. The, the, the but green who was the... BJ. Orange. BJ, right. And he was not orange. He was yellow. He right. was Baby Bop's brother. Right. There was another one, too. Was what? there? There was... Later, there was a new one. I never... Ba- Baby Bop. Like, there... I, I knew parents were like, I can I can handle Barney. But as soon as Baby yeah. Bop gets on the screen, yeah, game ba- over. Yeah, Baby Bop was nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. That's true. So, uh... Honestly, though, you were at Barney the movie opening night? No. You didn't go to Barney the movie? I didn't. I was ah. too old. Yeah, I, I remember seeing the, the Barney live show at uh, Universal Studios in Florida oh. back when I was a kid. It was always like Barney was more like my little brother's thing. I was already like sort of past the Barney age at that oh. point. But Okay. What about yeah. Barney Rummel? <laughs> would you watch a like that? Would you still watch new stuff with Barney Rubble? I, I mean, I would watch classic Flintstones right now. If okay. you're asking me to do a classic Flintstones, you podcast, know what we have in the collection Tell of me. our library? The what? Flintstones movie with John Goodman John and Goodman. Rick Moranis. I love that one. Should we you just know, watch that right now? I gotta tell you. I, All right, everybody, this podcast is cut short. I also kind of like Viva Rock Vegas. Oh, you don't like it? No. no. Well, well, I mean, I guess it's probably it's not like Gazoo's offensively it. bad. No. Oh, that's right. He is. Yeah. Who plays him? Just like a TV yeah, actor. No, it's Alan Cummings. Like from uh, well, Golden Eye or I X-Men guess, 2. The Good Wife he's on now. Do we have The Good Wife in our collection? Speaking of DVDs? I mean, there are lots of good wives at the no, this, library. This show. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, okay. All right. uh, you forgot to mention X-Men 2. He played Nightcrawler. Yeah, he played Nightcrawler in X-Men 2. Yeah. And he was in Spy Kids. Boy, he's all over the place. He's the, one, he's the one that I briefly saw on Broadway. I went to see Cabaret with my grandpa, and it was super dirty, so we left because it was uncomfortable. But Cabaret isn't the one I always think of when you say Cabaret. The one I think of is Chorus Line. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I hope I get it. No, that's different. That's okay. different. Go ahead. Keep going. I'm sorry. Yes. 
Uh, so if you're if you're interested in the Teen Titan series, we bought this because our other Teen Titan books were among our most popular graphic novels. So we got a few more Teen Titans, and they've not been good. So I'm sorry, folks, but you can check that out. Um, <laughs> Deal with it. Study Hall of Justice. That's a new uh, J graphic that I just read quickly. But that I, is a graphic. It's graphic. Yeah, it's mostly graphic. Really? I yeah. thought it was like a novel, kind of like no. the Wimpy Kid books. No, it's it's more graphic than anything else. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's an odd thing. It didn't really work, but I don't know. Kids might. That's like where it. Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent, and Diana Prince, yeah. as uh, Batman, Superman, and Wonder yeah. Woman, are just in middle school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of I don't know. It's meant to be kind of goofy, but I don't. I just think it kind of fails. Uh, getting getting over to non graphics uh, things I finished. I was working on Rizzolian Isles uh, by Tess Gerritsen, The Sinner. This is book three. I finished that. I didn't like it as much as I liked Die Again, which was the one that she just came out with a year or two ago. That's mm-hmm. the most recent. That I loved. This one I was like, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also read and finished uh, Eleanor and Park pretty quickly. I was I read a lot, like the second yeah. half of By that. By Rainbow Rowell. Almost one big setting, yeah. yeah. You were not a fan. Nope. But we, we won't talk about it now. We'll talk yeah. about it later. Listen, I'll just get it out of the way now, but, though. But we have a whole segment. The book was good. Okay. I didn't like it. Okay. And that, that's where I think some people, who, if they get mad at me about yeah. how I feel about that book, you're just going to have to deal yeah. with that. Yeah. I understand it's a good book, but... You can step back and say that was well written. But yeah, but for you, I did not like it. I understand. Uh, I read, let's see... I don't like being oh, drowned. Here's another thing. No. No, but I, don't I like that. being in the water. Okay. Yeah. See what I'm saying? I do, but I don't see how it's relevant. The quality of the water was good. Okay. I didn't like somebody holding me under okay. until the bubbles were... Yeah. Less. No, I wouldn't like that either. Oh, oh hey. <laughs> hey, all right. Arbuckle making his first debut. Hey, boy, can you say hi? No, he's not going to. He just barked yeah. the one time. That's my dog, Arbuckle. He's a Shih Tzu Pomeranian. Yeah. Born in 2009, so yeah. coming up on his seventh birthday. Our dogs are like the same age. That's great. It cracks me up. I think your dog's going to live longer, though. He's small, yeah. Yeah, and mine is a heavy chain smoker. Yeah, he is. So yeah, he is. he's always like, rough, yeah. rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a great impression. Thank you. The last thing I read is a play by uh, our old friend Neil Simon. Yeah. So one he of, is one old. Of, one of the very first, but we hardly knew each other. I directed Eric in a play called Jake's Women, which is a little-known Neil Simon. Yeah. Great play. Yeah. One of my. And favorites. then one time we were gonna be in the Odd Couple together, but you waited until I moved away. Yeah. And then you did the Odd Couple. Yeah. And then I came back. I was like, Hey, you want to do the Odd Couple again? And you and said, I No. I didn't want to do yeah. it. No, because I already done it. Yeah, that's true. You wouldn't but want to do Odd Couple again. I would. But then play the other role. Felix. Yeah. I would. Well, see, that's funny, because originally when we were thinking about doing this, and this has been like almost 10 years, I feel like, uh-huh. I was originally slated to play Felix, and we had read-throughs, like we did some auditions. We were ready, and then a couple guys dropped out, and we just couldn't do it, so we had to scrap it. And then when we approached it years later, we thought, you know, hmm. <laughs> maybe Nick should play Oscar. So There you go. You know, I did, and I liked it. Yeah. I think Felix would have been more of a challenge for me. I, Oscar's probably more fun. Okay. But this is totally off topic. But what I'm trying to say, how. actually, it's not. I can bring it back because <laughs> what I read by Neil Simon was a, a show called The Star Spangled Girl. They made it into a movie, but it's a little known. It's not a, it's not a hugely popular one. I think one. that that one is in, is that in like the volume that has Jake's Women? Like the might collection be. of them? I read it. Um, I, we our copy in the in the David A. Howe Library. Our collection is the comedy of Neil Simon. Oh. It's five or six of his like more comedic shows. That's yeah. where I discovered it down in the stacks, um, and I loved it. I thought it was really good, but it is very similar to The Odd Couple. It's basically just a different take on The Odd Couple. It's two guys are self publishing a political magazine out of their apartment, and a, an Olympic swimmer, the Star Spangled Girl, moves in and just kind of throws everything into chaos. So. It was a really good show. It so it's just, Neil Simon's Big Bang Theory? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. It's, just, uh, it's just three characters. I really liked it. So David A. Howe fans, keep an eye out, because Valley Theater might be making a comeback with really? the Star Spangled Girl. Is that a musical? No, it's not a musical. I am the Star Spangled Girl. Uh, I've got stars uh, in the sky, uh, and the red, white, and blue are for all. That's all. Uh, I guess that's it. As far as what I finished, I'm still reading uh, Hard Country. By Michael McGarity. That's the yeah. book club coming up. Um, Is it a hard read? No, it's a, it started it started pretty strong, and then it kind of like slumped a little bit, and I'm I'm sort of in a slump still. But emotionally, no, I'm fine emotionally. Hey, it's just you book. just gotta let people in. That's the mistake people make when they're in an emotional slump. Yeah. Are you okay? 
I'm fine. All right. Yeah. Just hard country, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's the end of my bookmark. We didn't yeah. announce the segment because we... we oh, yeah, that was we, bookmark. Yeah. We segued so well. <laughs> you couldn't believe it. I know. It was amazing. So what was yours? Um, let's see. What did I read? I finished Eleanor and Park. Okay. Two and, stars. And Rigby. Okay. I gave it two stars. Okay. As uh, my alert. personal review. Save some for later. Okay. Um, and then... What else did I read? I think... Oh! This one. I read... <laughs> I think you saw my review on Goodreads. Yes. Um, I, I read The Ghost of Heaven yeah. by Marcus Sedgwick. Now, yeah. I talked about that before because it's in four parts. Like, yeah. there's not really chapters. It's just, uh, part one deals with what the one I had talked about before, where it's this cave woman, uh, and she's writing on walls, and there's spirals and everything. Mm-hmm. Second chapter, or second segment, is about uh, this old, like, English town where a woman is called a witch, and okay. there's, you know, the witch burning and everything. Uh-huh. Some spirals there. Uh, third section is an old asylum. Okay. Uh, I don't know where it is. I can't remember where the asylum is. Okay. But it's just a guy working in the asylum. And the fourth one is about an astronaut on a ship looking for a new world. Ooh. And I don't know who the heck that book is for. Because it didn't seem like a YA. Because, okay. like, most of those books, most of those segments weren't involving teenagers. Okay. I don't Maybe the cave girl? I mean, cave... People didn't live long. Right. So, like, a teenager was an elder yeah. back then. Right, right. So, so, but this is a recent publish. Right? Yeah. It wasn't pretty Yeah, old. it uh, it was nominated or it won an award. I can't remember which one. Uh, Marcus Sedgwick has written other stuff that looked just as weird. Uh, does it say the award it won for? No, it doesn't. Um, it's it's this just... Is, this is like old school. We're working without the internet here at the, at yeah. the dining household. It's just a bizarre read because did you enjoy it i enjoyed the asylum story and i enjoyed the astronaut story so is there a thread that connects them at all yeah they all see spirals okay i don't really that's the thing there there isn't really any connection so it's just kind of weird and the i mean the sci-fi the last story about the astronaut it's like Hey kids, do you remember your favorite films such as 2001 A Space Odyssey and the Russian film Solaris? Mm-hmm. Well, do I have a story for you? <laughs> and like I just I mean, it was, yeah, I gave it 3 stars. I figured I'd give a star for each story in that book I liked, and I only liked two of them. Okay. And then I just gave it a third star cuz I mean, it was well written. Okay. But it is it's just a weird It's not a hit. Yeah, okay. and there's like no frame story to keep them all together. He says you can like, the last story ends, and you realize it can now be the first, go into the first story. So okay. it's like a circle. But that's a circle, not a spiral. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> um, Would you read more by the author? I don't think so. Okay. I it, it is weird, like, this whole, the YA genre is weird, because, like, Eleanor and Park as well, you know, they're written and put in the YA genre, but they're, a lot of times they just don't. It seems weird. Yeah. Like, like what defines I, a way book? Again, we're saving for the well, segment, but read... Eleanor Park struck me as more adult than Rainbow Rowell's adult books. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was certainly, it was not an easy book. Well, that's, I read that sometimes, and I think, like, you know, when, uh, going back to our, our discussion on To Kill a Mockingbird and Ghost of Watchmen, that, that, I think now... To Kill a Mockingbird might be considered YA. Yeah. If it were to come out. Well, Ender's Game became yeah. YA, yeah. but it, it is kind of strange. I mean, it's good. I'm glad the the YA... I, I don't want to say genre, but I'm glad the YA medium, I yeah. guess you might might be the better word, is there. Mm-hmm. But it's it's weird. Like, maybe he wrote this book and they were like, oh, that's YA. He's like, I don't know. Yeah. But, like, maybe it's YA because it's not hard enough sci-fi to survive mm-hmm. the adult science fiction yeah. fans. YA is... It's had such an interesting spike in popularity over the last i don't know 10 years it it seems like i don't know maybe harry potter ushered that in a little bit as 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 readers of that sort of grew up along with it maybe that well because harry potter started as like middle school fiction and then became YA. right exactly but as the books went on like it it dragged a lot of readers with it and suddenly there was a new like hunger for YA but it's you know certainly not just for kids and i know a lot of well i was on the kids desk at the library this morning and uh 
most of the checkouts were adults just yeah. checking out, you know. And that happens a lot. I have a lot of friends who are just like, you know, they love the YA genre. And mm-hmm. just that's where they go to. They go in a library, they go to the YA section. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's uh, it's sort of like a, I don't know, it's this weird, it's in this weird limbo place. It's almost yeah. like its own genre within just literature in general rather than like an age bracket. I, you know? I do get worried. I don't, I'm not trying to be like an elitist here and I'm not trying to downplay YA but I do get worried sometimes that I was like, oh, I want to read this YA book more than like the adult book. And mm-hmm. I worry that like maybe I'm picking YA because it's an easier read mm-hmm. and I'm not reading the stuff that might be better mm-hmm. for me mm-hmm. as, a, as a full grown adult. I'm sure that can be true in some cases, but yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of YA that's yeah. very but profound. You know what? Not... Yeah, I mean, you're right. And I think really, a lot, a lot of it sometimes is just you know it's it's content like does this follow a younger character yeah. is there excessive you know language or violence yeah. or themes that are you know would be deemed inappropriate i always for think that age. adults reading yeah. what I, I know people do look there are people who look down on adults who read ya but i don't ever see that i feel like if you read like a james patterson or you know you know what i mean the thrillers yeah. that you can finish in an afternoon yeah. because they're just so quick then you might as well You'd be better off reading YA. Yeah, it's true. I mean, they might be a quicker read because they're at a maybe a lower reading level than some of the adult books. Yeah. But like the content is probably well, going to be. I will. I'll pound through a James Patterson a lot quicker than I will Divergent. Yeah. You know, you know what's interesting too is that I think that sometimes, like uh, before I worked at, in Wellsville here, I, I worked at the Houghton College Library, which is academic, and mm-hmm. so academic libraries some are different, but a lot don't tend to focus a lot on popular fiction, but they often will have a really diverse and full. Uh, juvenile collection for yeah. like children's lit majors or whatever. So yeah. I know at Houghton, the YA section was the the best place to find like fiction. Yeah. And so I think a lot of people who came into the library looking for something fun to read found their way to the YA room, mm-hmm. and maybe that sort of stuck with them. You yeah. Know? So it could be sort of coming out of college. You you know, spotlight is shined on there. There's a lot of reasons, but it's one of the things that I that I like so much about our YA for Adults book club because it yeah gives. I mean, you and me, it's it's fun. It's fun to talk about it with people, but it also gives people who are interested in that a place to come and like chat about it. So yeah, man. So we're doing Eleanor and Park with t- tomorrow, right? Tuesday yeah. the twelfth, is it? Yep. Six thirty. So if, if yeah. you're listening to this pre Tuesday yeah. the twelfth, and, and you're like, wait a second, I can still us. make it. If you're listening to us and it's Tuesday at six twenty-five, get yeah. in the car. Yeah. All right, boss. I gotta leave early. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what again? Yeah. I don't know why this guy has left early so much. I know. Just, yeah. Pick and choose your battles. A lot of book clubs, but... So, yeah, that's it. (laughs) He's constantly finding about book clubs at, like, the very last notice. He's like, oh, no, not again. Yeah. A Stephen King book club meets (laughs) 10 minutes. That would be a fun book club. A Stephen King book club? Well, you would hate it, but I would enjoy it. Yeah, why don't you do one? Maybe Uh, I will. All right, so those are what I read. Uh, Eleanor Park and the Ghost of Heaven. I guess I would suggest Ghost of Heaven, Okay. but I guess... Author? Do you have the author handy? Marcus Sedgwick? Marcus Sedgwick. But at the same time... If you were like, oh, I would like to read a story like The Ghost of Heaven, I would just suggest reading Hyperion. Dan Simmons? Yeah. Okay. Except Hyperion has lots of sexual things. Okay. I can't even say, like, undertones. Like, it's, <laughs> oh, there's nothing oh under about it. <laughs> okay. It's it's right to the surface. Yeah. But, and right now I'm reading uh, Blue Screen by Dan Wells. It's his, the first book of his new series. It's a cyberpunk series. Cyberpunk. Yeah. I'm only like 40 pages into it. Fine. So, yeah, I'll see if I like it. It's hard. Cyberpunk is, it's cool, but it's almost like an archaic genre. Explain cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is the future that we're basically living in. Okay. Now, or just in a couple of, like, years. Cyberpunk is a hard genre to write because we're always catching up to it. Popular cyberpunk stuff would be... Like The Matrix is cyberpunk. Okay. Um, Ghost in the Shell is a popular anime that uh, created cyberpunk. Johnny McNomic, another Keanu Reeves film. Yeah. Uh, cyberpunk is where the technology is, and corporations are a big part. Okay. Usually you'll find corporations have all the power. Uh, the internet is a huge role. Oh, well, I, uh, uh, Neuromancer. That's the big one that. Everyone's like, oh, this started the genre by uh, William Gibson. You know, people have, like, uplinks in their brain to the internet. Cybernetics are everywhere. Okay. So. Hmm. 
It's a cool genre. I don't think I've read much of that genre. We played Netrunner, the game Android Netrunner. Netrunner, okay, Netrunner yeah. is cyberpunk. Yeah. So that's a that's a good game. I like that. Yeah. Um, but I I've yet to I didn't like Neuromancer, and so far reading this blue screen, I'm not loving okay. it so far. And to be fair, I didn't really love his partial series. Mm. Um, so maybe I only like Dan Wells when he's writing John the Cle- I am not John a Cleaver. the John Cleaver series. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a serial killer. Mm-hmm. So or when he's talking about writing in general. Yeah. So we'll see. I hope it's good. Okay. Because I could use a good cyberpunk. Do you have the New York Times bestseller list this week? Are Do we I? Okay. Well, I can go on with mine. I just was wondering if you had it. All right. So now we're going to talk about uh, book news. Things uh, coming to you shortly. Now, I got in trouble last week because I accidentally had one on my list that was also on Eric's list. All right. So you, was, if you want me to scary. believe anything about that was an accident, I didn't realize the I didn't realize the Man, date. I am so thirsty until I was already. L- listen to my in mouth. It. Listen how dry it is. Okay. So dry. That is dry. Can I get a drink, man? Yeah, go ahead. I'll All right, you keep going. Yeah, I'm, I'll I'm talk still for listening. A no, it's fine. All right. Yeah, he doesn't listen when he's in the room, so I doubt he's listening oh. now. Uh, anyway, uh, Linda Fairstein. Uh, Linda Fairstein's Alexander Cooper Do you have anything series. Seltzer? You are going to wake my child up. Uh, no, I don't. Oh, no, there's V8 on the bottom shelf. V8 Fusion. This is not product placement. We're getting no money from V8. Wow. This V8 Fusion no, we're not, no, we're not has getting, a fresh new look, but not, it's the same grapefruit taste. No, we're not giving the money. 100% juice? They're not, they're not sponsoring us. You're giving this away for free. All right, sure. All right, but give, give me some of that delicious V8 Fusion. Yeah. Right? Hey. Okay. You, you get a serving of fruit per eight-ounce yeah. glass wow, that's great. of V8 Fusion. Wow, you're literally screaming. Uh, <laughs> Linda Fairstein thriller Killer Look, the 18th in her Alexander Cooper series. Now, I haven't read this series um, I see them all the time. Obviously, there's 18 just of these Alexander Coopers alone. So, very popular series. So, keep an eye out for this coming out uh, July 26th, uh, 2016. So, down the road ways. Uh, next, we have Heather Graham. <gasps> I know. Speaking of Heather Graham. I know. Uh, I've been... I started watching Portlandia with uh, Fred Armisen and... I don't remember the actress's name because yeah. it's like the only thing I've ever seen her in. Carrie something? Carrie. Oh, I'm sorry. It's I okay. really like the show, but Heather Graham was in there. The uh, actress, not, not the... Not the author. Right. Heather Graham's got another one of her mm. uh, spooky paranormal... This is delicious. It is. V8. Uh, mm. Set in Alaska. So this is Deadly Fate by Heather Graham. This is Crew of Hunters number 19. What? Also 19? coming out July 26, Did you say this takes place in Alaska? Yeah, in Alaska. Uh, James Grappando's Gone Again. This is a Jack Swiatek novel. This is number 12. Uh, mm. So, I again, this is another one I haven't read. I need we, gotta, to go. we gotta get a book deal where we can also have 48 books in the series know, out seriously? there. Yeah, so hey, many. Hey, let's do a book series where each title is something based off of the letter of the alphabet. Okay. So we, we're we guaranteed 26 books. Right. Like A is for well, absolution. Yeah. B is for betrayal. Yeah. Well, C for canary. S- you're describing Sue D Gra- for Digimon. S- Sue Grafton's uh, E for series. Eric. Sue Grafton already beat you to it. A is for alibi. B is for burglar. Oh. Yeah. She's just about finished too. F is for me finding See, this out now. now. Listen to this. Here's <laughs> <laughs> here's the smart money. Okay. Uh-huh. Because Sue Grafton, uh-huh. you're right. I mean, unless she's going to start doing like the Greek alphabet, she's done. Okay. Sure. She's done. Yeah. But somebody like Eugenia Ivanovich. It's numbers. There's, yeah. there's no last yeah. number. Yeah. At least I've been told there's no last number. So. Uh, no, I don't think there is a last number. All right. All right. Well, what about 10? Well, let's let's check with our fact checkers. Guys, there's not. Okay. It's still. Okay. No, we're well, getting they, the word. They can't state definitively as of right now. Right. There's no last number. Is that right? There's no last number right now? Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. How, how's yeah. Mary? <laughs> okay. You right. shouldn't say that we're recording. Yeah. Oh, I think it's soundproof. You, you have to go to the bathroom. You should have thought about that before we started recording. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, we gotta check you facts. Get a, you get Arbuckle, a 15 please. minute break, but not now. Whew. Anyway, so uh, just to go over those quickly again, we have Killer Look by Linda Fairstein, yeah. Deadly Fate by Heather Graham, and mm-hmm. Gone Again by James Grappando. Yeah. So keep an eye out for those. Yeah. Those will all be on our shelves yeah. in the next couple of months. Okay. Alpha is for no. the robot from Power Rangers. We're done. Beta is for Betamax. Okay. Kappa is for put a kappa on it. Okay. We're done. Could we be done with this bit? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Here's some book, uh, part of book news where... I feel like I got off easy with that. 
Oh, because I could have kept going. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't tell your doctor, be quiet. During my book news segment, our book sorry. news segment. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, let's see. We're a team. Me and Arbuckle? No, you and me. That's why I said we are. Okay. Not your. Wow. He's, he's fine. He's, okay. He's just playing with his rawhide. Good job, buddy. Get in there. <laughs> all right. All these books are coming out April 12th. That's my birthday. Is it? No, it's, no, not. it's not. No, it's not. What is April 12th? Nothing. That's nobody's birthday. No. I mean, unless it's your birthday, then happy birthday, yeah, listeners. That's right. You podcasts out there with... Yeah. We should uh, have birthday announcements. We hey, should do if a it's birthday. your birthday, if you want us to say your birthday? Tell us. Yeah, we'll do it. All right. So again, all these books are coming out April twelfth. Oh you can find them at your local library, or anywhere else, but mainly oh your library. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that reminds me. This is uh, starting April tenth. Happy Before Library Week! It's Library Week. So, uh, if you're a local listener, please stop into the David A. Howe Public Library because we have gift baskets. With merchandise from our friends group, with uh, books, with you can candy, raffle. all sorts of stuff. We got we got five different raffle baskets, and you yeah. can get an entry just by using the library. So yeah. please come in and see us. Uh, check out all the programs we have going on. Check out some books. Check yeah. out some music, some movies. Yeah. It's National Library Week. Yeah. I guess you could say it's a party in the USA. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So if you're local, Who come into our song? library. Miley Cyrus, right? Oh, okay. Who sings boom, boom, clap to boom, 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 clap, clap? I don't know. I don't know. Is that the same song? If you're not local, go to your own local public yeah. library and tell them that Nick and Eric from All the Books sent you. Yeah. When they stare at you blankly, tell them where to download us. Yeah, SoundCloud and iTunes. Yeah. And YouTube. And YouTube. All right, let's get on with the book news. The real the real news is book news. Okay. <gasps> what if that was our catchphrase for this yeah. segment? The real news and is book news. And now for the real news. Yeah. Book news. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. And the naturalist, Theodore Roosevelt, A Lifetime of Exploration and the Triumph of American Natural History by Darren Londe, is out now. Well, it's out <laughs> April 12th. Wow, thanks, Jim. And now for a look at sports. Just no, kidding. No. I don't... Yeah. Okay, we lost it. Uh, okay, so it's a... Arbuckle, this is so unprofessional. Please stop. Shush. Come here, boy. Shush. Come on, get over here. <laughs> yeah, shake it up good. Come over here. Man. You can be on the show. He's like a... All right, so Ted, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, how do you feel about him? Uh, I don't have strong feelings about Teddy Roosevelt. You love all presidents, though. I know. I don't. I mean, Teddy Roosevelt. He doesn't Roosevelt. rank high he's, on your list of presidents? Here's the thing with Teddy Roosevelt. Nothing about him shocks me. If you told me that, like, oh, you, Teddy Roosevelt had a, had a pet tiger as a baby, and he would ride around on his diaper on the back of a tiger, like, going from town to town, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, would, he, I would believe it. Okay, If cool. you told me he fathered, like, three children at the age of 12, I would believe it. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a captivating new account of oh, how what? Theodore Roosevelt, lifelong passion for the natural world, set the stage for American wildlife. But everybody knows that. Yeah. He liked to kill lots of animals. Yeah. And then he realized he had killed most of them, and so he had him. <laughs> create yeah, reservations he to raise them up animals. again that's right yeah so he's like oh we're out of the american brown bear yeah. well we better keep him safe so i can hunt them in the future yeah now get me my seventh helping of bacon i assume i love it yeah. my steakin so and my musket please yeah. bring that i assume steakin is a a bacon wrapped steak yeah it is <laughs> I assume he's eating yeah, it steakin yeah as a snack that's just a snack oh my gosh yeah. theodore um all right Here's another nonfiction. Hamilton, The Revolution, by Lynn Manuel Miranda. Again? What? What do you what mean is again? This? this is, uh, let me read the description for you. Yeah. Lynn Manuel Miranda's groundbreaking musical, Hamilton, is a revolutionary as his subject, the poor kid from the Caribbean who fought the British defending the Constitution and helped to found the United States. Fusing hip hop, R and B, and the best traditions of theater, this once in a generation show broadens the sound of Broadway, reveals the story power, storytelling power of rap, and claims our country's origins for a new, diverse generation. Uh, Hamilton, the Revolution. I guess that was just a sell of the play. I'm yeah, sorry, that I, didn't describe this no, book. No. Gives readers an unprecedented view of both revolutions from only the writers able to provide it. Miranda, along with Jeremy McCarter a cultural critic and theater artist who was involved in the project. Oh, man. Just tell me what this book is about. Their account features photos by the renowned Frank... All right, so it's just like a behind-the-scenes of the Broadway show. Uh, yes. Okay. Of Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. Yes. Okay. No. Um, All right. The book Last... does more than tell oh. the surprising story of how a Broadway musical became a national phenomenon. Phenomenon. It demonstrates the America that has always been renewed by the brash upstarts and brilliant outsiders. All right. So if you want to learn about the... It's under humor and entertainment. Oh, I guess entertainment. Are you going to get this for the library? Sure. Please do. Yeah. 
That's all. All right. Uh, have you read this yet? That's that's when they're singing about the Reynolds paper. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. And they're no, like, he's never gets, gonna be president. I guess a few now. people probably get your Hamilton jokes. Yeah, you're right. Hamilton's not a sellout show. Okay. We couldn't get tickets if we wanted to. All right. Well, you and I could. Yeah. Because of this podcast. Yeah, we do. We're all like, do you know who yeah. we are? Yeah. So yeah, yeah we they sit us right next to um, Kevin Smith. He's the only name I can think of there. Wow. So that's great. Podcasting uh, royalty. I'm going to save this one for... Oh, my gosh. All right. I haven't done a cookbook in a while. That's true. But here's one. It's all easy, delicious weekday recipes for the super busy home cook by... Paula Dean. Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, boy. Yeah. So... Oh like, boy. she hasn't been in enough hot water for all her, like, I'm a celebrity, but I'm still down to earth. Yeah. Pat, everybody should make a home cooked dinner. Yeah. Just have your mates start it three hours before you get home. Yeah. Anyway, how do you feel about Gwyneth Paltrow writing cookbooks? I, I mean, I, <laughs> Godspeed, Gwyneth. Yeah, okay. I hope you and Apple have a delicious meal. Who's Apple? Her daughter. <laughs> oh my gosh. You don't know that? Uh, everybody knows that. Look, I don't get political too much on this. But Apple is a stupid name. How is that political? I don't is know. Apple running for office or something? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Apple for president. Hey, speaking of politics, though, Bernie Sanders is in Buffalo right Apparently. now. Apparently. As we record, yeah. Bernie Sanders is also recording. Yeah. I don't know why he didn't invite us. Yeah, it's rude. Uh, I guess maybe he doesn't think we'd... I don't know. I don't know either. Well, anyway. Uh, now you have to give equal time to a Republican candidate of your choice. <laughs> uh, Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Is, That's a good choice. Was an actor. Solid choice. Yeah, okay. Lincoln. Yeah, I don't know if the Republican Party today would be recognizable by, to Abraham Lincoln, though. Well, he's been dead for so long. <laughs> Most things wouldn't be. Yeah. It's like, yeah. cell phone? No, he'd get that. Oh. Yeah. Because he's a smart fellow. Saved him a lot of trouble. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ramir, I think that's done. Nope. I thought I was done with uh, nonfiction, but I'm not. Okay. First women. The grace and power of America's modern first ladies. Who's your favorite first lady? Dolly Madison. Her snack, her snack cakes are delicious. Okay. She saved that portrait of Washington. It's a great story. Oh, really? Yeah. Washington, the, the White House was burning, and she like ran back inside to save that Washington portrait. Wow. Well, good for you, Dolly Madison. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I mean, Jackie O was very stylish, but I don't think she saved any paintings from burning. Jackie O is... Jackie Kennedy. Oh, okay. Well, this... This book covers, uh, talks about the first ladies from Jackie Kennedy to okay. Michelle Obama. Okay. So who's your favorite first lady in that era? Boy. I mean, it's hard not to say Lady Bird Johnson just because her name is Lady Bird Johnson. <laughs> okay. But. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about uh, Nancy Reagan, who made sure kids weren't doing drugs by doing special episodes of, uh... oh no, which one was it? Not I Facts of Life. I don't know. What you talk about, Willis? Oh, different strokes? Different strokes. Now the world don't move dun, to the dun, beat of just, just one drum. drum. Yeah. Right. She was on that ep- She was on that episode. What you talking about, Eric? Yeah. No, she was on an episode and she's like, drugs are bad. Is anybody doing drugs here? And like a kid raises his hand. Like a, an elementary school kid raises his hand and, uh, oh crap, I can't remember the actor's name. Arnold? Yeah. Who's our actor? Uh, Gary Coleman. Yeah, Gary Coleman's class. Yeah. The kid just gets up and goes, like, thank you. That was very brave. And they walk wow. him off. And you know that kid was detained. Yeah. So Maybe he was a plant. Oh, to they get just, other kids. They're like, like, we've never seen that kid before. <laughs> kid's like, I'm on crack hard. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, well, <laughs> who are you? Your bravery really inspired us to admit we're all on drugs. <laughs> you were invisible to us yeah. before because of your drug habit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so thank you, Nancy Reagan, who actually just recently passed away. So it's a very, oh, very timely. Uh, uh, you know who also just there. passed away? Lots of people. Gary Shanley. Yeah. Did you ever watch any of his stuff? I didn't watch the Larry Sanders show. I've seen him and stuff. Okay. Crack me up. He was in, just in uh, what Avengers, right? He's he was in the f- second Iron Man movie. He was in Iron Man two. Okay. And he was in Captain America. Captain America Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Okay. He was the one who got to say Hail Hydra for the first time. That's right. And it was like a <gasps> What? Big deal. Yeah. Okay. So Yeah, that's that's a shame. Yeah. Alright, let's keep going. let's go on with book news. Okay. Instead of talking about all the uh people who've passed away. Yeah. Uh Remy Nightingale by Katie D. Camelo. I thought you were gonna throw up. Bro. Yeah, I felt like it. <laughs> um 
Do you know that author? What was it? Uh, medalist. Oh, she won the Newberry. Kate uh, D. Camilla. Yeah. Yeah, she wrote um, the one with a mouse. <laughs> what is that called? Uh, Despero. Tale of Despero. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, she has a new book out. Uh, Raimi. Raimi? Okay. It's R A Y, like Ray, mm-hmm. and then M I E. Yeah. Raimi. 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 Yeah. Raimi Nightingale. Sure. Okay. Uh, it comes out the twelfth. That's kids, kids' book, children's book. Oh, I've closed it now. Okay. So well, I'll never know. Probably. Uh, she went to Newberry's. Most Wanted by Lisa Scottline. Yeah. Oh, it's Scottoline. I never know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's the O there. That was a favorite of our former auditorium director, recently retired Eileen Texas. So shout out Lisa Scottoline. Yeah, was? she loved her. Okay. She probably a, still does. She's a popular author. Yeah. She, she's another like. There's always a new book out yeah. kind of person. Yeah. Hey, uh, a new graphic novel by our favorite uh, Moon Man, Wonder Woman Earth One by Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison. Yeah. I finally got my hands on the Wonder Woman yeah. canon. Yeah. I made her a space alien. Yeah. I was told to by a wee little man who lives <laughs> on my couch. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. What if Grant Morrison listens to this and he sends his rocket ship here to kill me? Yeah. yeah. Grant, it's Grant, just... I'm sorry. <laughs> I felt you were really sorry yeah. through the waves of the dimensional. You're, you're kind of making him sound like a valley girl there. Oh, yeah. That's all right. Okay. Uh, but Rude did... much, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I did. We've ordered this. We've pre-ordered this. So we'll have this. Cool. You the know Earth, what? The Earth One series tend to be, tends to be very. I got popular. a. Uh, we got Superman, Batman. I got an advanced copy of that. Yeah, and I haven't read it yet. Really? Of the Wonder Woman oh, ones. You got to read it like today, otherwise it won't be advanced. Oh my gosh, you're I right. Read it right now, I gotta go home. Otherwise, you're just like an average Joe reading a comic yeah, book, like an idiot. Yeah. Uh, last book I have for book news: The Obsession, written by Nora Roberts. Wow, Nora Roberts. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. I know. I like how every now and then they'll put like book whatever of the series, but some yeah. authors I wish they would just say book of all the books they've written. Yeah, like book two hundred and seventy oh of Nora gosh, Roberts. That is so low. That is so low. <laughs> so she's got to be. Yeah. Oh man, she's got to be like a thousand. Yeah. Oh, speaking of a thousand Do you year think old, she has like just an army of authors like locked in her basement, and she's like, "Y'all are not coming out of there until you turn out the next Nora Roberts hit." <laughs> Maybe. Do you think? Yeah. I don't know why I turned her into Paula Deen. But... Is she J.D. Robb as well? She is J.D. Robb, Oh, yeah. my gosh. I know. That woman. <laughs> I know. She's superhuman. Yeah. Do you she's, think, like... She is Grant Morrison's Do you think she has time woman. for people? I don't think she has time for people. Do you think people... I, are... think, I think she has to eat her food by ingesting pellets like the Jetsons. I think yeah. that's the only way. But, like, people are, like, putting the pellets in her mouth. Because if she takes her so hands away from the keyboard, no. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no. And she doesn't have hands. She just has withered stumps from all <laughs> like the clunk, tapping clunk, on clunk, the clunk. keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to say, speaking of elderly authors... I don't um, think she's elderly. I don't think she's that old. Well, you said she was, like, a thousand. No, I meant she had, like, a, like her output was, like, a thousand books. Oh! It's not 200. She has more than that. I thought you said she was a thousand. I, I don't thought know. thought it was very rude of you. That would be rude. I, she's probably 60, but I would say. Speaking of authors mm-hmm. who are very old, we want to wish a happy birthday to Beverly Cleary. Oh, yeah. Who... Turns a hundred yeah, this week. She sure does. Still alive. Ooh. Turns a hundred years old. Yeah. Uh, wrote the Rem- Ramona series. Yeah. So Ramona and Beezus. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's Happy crazy. birthday, Beverly Cleary. What, what, what was your last? I don't know, the last time she wrote something. I don't know. She like a Stan Lee character. Stop put like working in 1968. Yeah, I think so. Hanging around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after uh, Beverly I mean, you Cleary, know, she, she deserves her retirement. So yeah. I mean, she it. created Spider Man. That was Stan Lee. Oh, right. So yeah. who wrote the Rem- Ramona series? Beverly Cleary. Oh, I thought Stan Lee wrote the Ramona series with Jack Kirby. That was Sp- uh, Spider-Man. Oh. Actually, it was Steve Dick. Yeah, nice try. I almost <laughs> got you in a web there, huh? Yeah, no, got you in a web oh, Spider-Man. We, right. were, we were asked to stop talking about graphic novels. That's so true. Please. So let's read uh, New York Times bestsellers I'm list. Ready. Uh, I'm reading this off my phone you don't instead of my computer. That. Nobody's interested. Well, I want they, they want a behind the scenes. They don't. But, uh, that picture I took of us recording last week went viral. Okay. Like ten people liked it. What are you? What are you looking up? You don't have a laptop. Uh, please don't. Please don't question me. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Number ten. Oh, this is a fun title. Once a rancher, by Linda Lael Miller. Uh huh. A troubled teenager helps bring together his uh, harried guardian and a filmmaker who has returned to the family ranch. Yeah, ranch. I was gonna say often those are like western set. Okay. They're like modern romances, but usually like on a ranch. Or okay. The country. Yeah, and a filmmaker. 
Mm-hmm. I, I bet the the filmmakers like. What do you mean I have to go out Actually, for that... eggs? Where are the eggs in the refrigerator? That kind of surprises me. I didn't realize she was still putting out in uh, hardcover. I thought she did most. You recognize paperback now? Well, Linda this... Lyle Miller. When I this is a combined print and ebook fiction. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, that I always read, so okay. it must still be paperback then. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't say hardcover. Okay. Uh, the Nightingale is at number nine by Kristen Henna. Oh, Do you know tis, two sisters are separated in World War Two, France? One in the countryside, the other in Paris. And one of them is a nightingale. Yeah, and one's a filmmaker. Hmm. And that one is always like, what do you mean I have to go outside to use the bathroom? Yeah. And then the, night- the nightingale's like, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number eight. Partners by John Grisham. Partners? Partners. What are you reading? The combined print and ebook fiction of oh. New York Times bestsellers. Okay, so you're not all right. So this is this is confusing because John Grisham does not have a new book out. This is a this is a direct to digital short story. Yeah, you're confusing number, our, you're confusing our listeners. This is the same list I read every week. Well, you can combine. You're confusing. Me I'm not then. just re- going to read the top selling hardcovers. Well, but that's just a, that's a single short story. That's just a standalone short story. Do you want me to change this format and no, start reading the not, hardcovers? It's, no, it's just not quite the same because you're comparing like a $2 ebook to like a $30 brand new. I'm sorry, man. Keep going. All right, everybody. Uh, so now what we do uh, is we read the hardcover fiction. This is oh, where we go okay. over the New York Times bestsellers hardcover fiction okay. so that Nick doesn't get confused. I'm just trying to keep you honest. Like there. a... Like a little baby still learning his shapes and colors. <laughs> and that was scary for a minute. <laughs> number 10 on this new list. Okay. Brush of Wings by Karen Kingsbury. This is book three in uh-huh. the Angels Walking series. Kingsbury? Angel walking. That's <laughs> Like dead man walking. Yeah, but you say yeah, about yeah, an yeah. angel yeah, who's yeah. about to do something real I good I get it. to somebody. Yep. Do you remember Touched by an Angel? Yeah, I also remember City of Angels starring Nick, Nick Cage and Meg Ryan. Do you remember Michael starring John Travolta? I do. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, angels in the Outfield starring Christopher Lloyd, yeah. Tony, Tony Danza. Yeah. Angels We Have Heard on High. That's a Christmas song. Okay. Go, go on. Uh, number nine, Property of a Noble Woman by Danielle Steele. Wow. You okay? You just turned into like, uh, I was like Catherine ah. Hepburn. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's mine. Oh, David. <laughs> it's my hardcover. <laughs> uh, number eight, Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. There it is. Did you know this is a psychological thriller set in the, uh, I can't say that, it's set in London. Okay. They use a weird word here, uh, environs. Okay. Check it out. God, that was right in my face. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. What do you think that word means? Like, environment like the, you know the summer before the war oh you wanted to read this one that's, is it number seven yeah that's right yeah yeah yeah. it's the life in sussex england at the beginning of world war one yeah, that did sound that sounded good yeah you remember the summer before the war oh i sure do it was much better than the summer of the war quiet i have to write a book about it <laughs> okay the nightingale by Kristen Hanna at number five. Oh, i skipped number six all the light we cannot see man yeah. This is like a greatest hit to the New York Times bestseller. Yeah, list. number four, Journey to Munich by Jacqueline Winspear. Don't go to Munich. Well, what about today? <laughs> yeah, today's all right. Yeah. But 1938. This is 1938. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, this, no, that's a Maisie Dobbs book. So if you're a Maisie Dobbs fan, that's right there. Hmm. Mystery series, historical I, mystery. I can't hear the word Maisie without thinking of a mouse. I can't hear the word Maisie without thinking of uh, Dr. Seuss. Well, I guess we're both trapped then. I guess so. Let's, it, let's make a pact. Okay. If the first one to have a daughter names their daughter Maisie, yeah. the second one to have a daughter also names it Maisie. I love it. So we have two Maisies in the world. Yeah. One who is very mouse-like and one who only speaks in nonsensical rhymes. See, the thing that's cool about this is there's no downside. <laughs> okay. Number three, Private Paris by uh, Mark Sullivan and up-and-coming writer James Patterson. Now, I've never heard of this James Patterson, so it's very kind of Mark Sullivan to carry him on his shoulders like that. <laughs> that's pr- Number two, The Nest. Uh, the Nightingale. No, it's just the nest. Just the nest. Yeah. But Nightingale. <laughs> I have. believed you. Yeah. It's like a Nightingale spinoff. Uh, number one, Fool Me Once, Harlan Coben. Coben. Okay. Yeah. Pretty similar to last week. Not many changes. Yeah, well. Harlan Coben's going strong. Don't ask me to change. I'm not going to. I'm not asking. I'm just saying. All right. So today, <laughs> as we've. Was as that our segue? T- yeah. Today, as we've teased a little bit, and as we've uh, talked about somewhat in this podcast, we're going to be talking about Rainbow Rowl. So it's actually pronounced Rainbow Wow L. It's not. Oh, it's not. That makes phonetically that makes no sense. Really? If you're following the rules of phonics, then 
That, that, yeah. can't, Nick, Nick, that Nick. can't be. I never follow the rules of phonics. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. Man, darn it, that doesn't make me respect you more. <laughs> yeah. You just I, a lo- you're a loose cannon when it comes to phonics. That's true. So Rainbow Or should Rowell, I say that's true A? Mm-hmm. No, it's just true. True yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You had it, you had it in one, and then you went back. Mm. So Rainbow Rowell has written, uh, what, what is it, six, five, five. Five full Tell albums. you've really done your research here. Starting in 2011 with The Attachments, followed in 2013 by Eleanor and Park. Uh, also 2013 Fangirl. Yeah, 20, way to go. 2014 saw Landline. 2015 saw Carry On. Yeah. And there's a few short stories mixed in there, too. Yeah. This is probably this is the first time we've covered an author who hasn't had decades yeah. of work. She's a, she's a sort of an up-and-comer, I think. Yeah. You know, I mean, she probably hit biggest with Fangirl, I would think. So you think that's what... She's maybe most well known for? No, it would be Eleanor and Park. Eleanor and Park? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I would say so. All right. Um, I was actually, so, so these are, it's interesting because um, two out of the five are adults. Attachments and Landline are, are mm. Cat Park, Fangirl, and Carry On are um, YA. Yeah. When, now, when we read Attachments, this was my, both of us actually, the first book both of us read by Rainbow Rowell was Attachments. We read it at different times though. You yeah. read it as part of a book club. Yeah. I did not. You didn't? No, I just read it on my own. Oh, I saw it. I was like, I have time to read this book. It, it just fit a, a spot in my to read yeah. at a moment. So, uh, attachments follows the story of a of a man who works at a company, and his job is to like screen emails. Yeah, and so you see his perspective, and then all you read about the the female characters are their email correspondence, yeah. Yeah. and he kind of gets sucked in. And, yeah. Guess know, what? Interesting. He falls in love. Yeah. With the girl he's reading the emails of. Yeah. So it's kind of creepy. Yeah, kind of, uh... that's the thing. That's what I had trouble getting over because yeah. the whole time I was like, "This, how is she ever going to be okay with this? This is creepy." It's very. Uh, I found that very much to be like a, like if I was, at the time, if when I had read it, if I had been single, yeah, maybe twenty seventeen, twenty one. You know, those very like defining ages where mm-hmm. life is changing. And I was lonely. Reading attachments would have been like a wish fulfillment. You know, a pick me up kind of book. Like, you know what? Someday yeah. I'm gonna find somebody. But being married and everything, I was just kind of like, huh? It's kind of weird. Yeah. So I don't know. How do you feel? How did you feel about? It? I, you, I was uh, I was okay with attachments. Like I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I I remember feeling like, oh, well, like we're saying here, the the plot to me seemed a little hard to believe. Uh, it was the, the resolution I thought was very convenient. But I liked. I liked the sort of the core of her style. I thought it's very it's very quippy. It's very pop culture heavy. Um, the dialogue it feels it feels real, but it feels a little bit heightened too. You know, like you you could imagine people talking like that, but they would have to be people who watched a lot of TV <laughs> and have a really good rapport with each other. Right. So I uh, I enjoyed the dialogue. You recently changed your Goodreads review of Attachments. It used to be four stars. Yeah, it's true. But you changed it. Yeah. Three, three stars. stars. All right. Three stars. Yep. Here's the thing. I remember when I read Attachments, I thought that I was reading uh, a, a YA author who's like crossing over into the adult. Yeah. That's how that, I, that's it, what I it thought. It was weird for me to find out she wrote this first. Yeah. This but was you can kind of see why she's like, I'm going to go write yeah, some well, it was, it was a now. smart move because I, yeah. I think that, well, I mean, we can get into that one in a minute, but yeah. I do think that that's kind of, um, I don't know, YA seems like a better, better fit. I mean, even Attachments is... Is, would have been to me. It would have been more believable if it was YA. If we were talking about like teenagers yeah. in these situations, yeah, nothing teenagers love more than nineties references no, and I know. Uh, talking about <laughs> Not emails. That. I just mean like the, the show plot. me a teenager who has an email account today. I know that's that's true. The plot in attachments, though, if it would have been a YA book, I wouldn't have questioned it. But as an adult book, I just felt like oh, I don't. I just I don't see it. I did enjoy it though. I, okay, I, it was enough that I wanted to read more. All right, uh, I have a review I wrote on Goodreads. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read this, ready? Okay, yeah, I'm ready. It seems kind of snotty rereading it, but yeah. here's how I felt about attachments when I first read it. Okay. July 2014. Uh-huh. Three problems kept me from really loving this book. Mm-hmm. I gave it three stars, so that's not bad. Here okay. are the three star three things that kept me from giving it a number four, a uh, four-star rating. Ready? Mm-hmm. Number one, I didn't really see anything great about Beth and Jennifer, mm-hmm. so I didn't get why Lincoln would be all about them, yeah. especially Beth. Right. And that's true. I remember that thinking like he's obsessed with their emails and the way they talk and everything and thinks they're great. But like I remember reading that and it was like, nothing stand out here. Yeah. They're just talking about lives. Mm-hmm. 
Anyway, number two, the pop references felt more like geek pandering than important. Like, Ral had a list of nerd names to drop by the book's end. Yeah. She's like, oh, and Quantum Leap. It felt very... Uh, she had like a bucket list of the yes. nineties. Yeah, very like um, Big Bang Theory. Yeah, like hey, knock knock, who's there? Green Lantern. Laugh right. track. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think I think what makes that stand out to me a little bit more, and this was true at Landline as well, which we'll get to in a minute. But some of them just fit really seamlessly in there. Some work yeah. really well, and every once in a while, I think she just takes it a little bit too far. Yeah. She's like, "Oh crap, I forgot to mention Twin Peaks." <laughs> yeah. you know? So then it's like in there, and you're like, oh, yeah. "Okay, yeah, yeah." That hamburger reminded him of the time he watched Murder She Wrote. Yeah, at home, right, in his elf blanket. <laughs> Uh, yes, I right. would believe that as dialogue. <laughs> okay. Do you need an elf blanket? I'm going to find you an elf blanket I have an on elf, eBay. I have an elf puppet. but The frick? Yeah, he's small. He's small. But he's a puppet. Yeah, he's a puppet. Like you can move him around and make him talk? Yeah. I'll post a picture on Twitter. <laughs> I want our audience to All know. right, number three. Ready? Yeah. The ending was way too easy, yes. quick and clean. Yes. It just seemed like a rushed way to finish a complicated subject. Yeah, I agree. I That, I, that was the thing that, that made me... I would have liked it much yeah. more. But that he was like, hey, by the way, like, I've been spying on you for a long time. And yeah. she's like, come here, you! Yeah. Uh, and then I said, but other than that, I liked Lincoln and found most of the story harmlessly cute. Okay. But I think I would have liked it a few years ago when I was still single. I just said that. Yeah, you did. I still feel that way two you years later. You said that exact same thing. Oh my thing. gosh. Oh wait, it would be two years. Yeah. So that's how I felt about, uh, attachments. Okay. All right. Good to I know. I guess you would say I have no great attachment. Yeah. For it. But did, I mean, did you enjoy it enough to want to read more? It did make me think I could read Eleanor and Park. Yeah. Fangirl, or well, yes, yes. I it, mean, I, I'm. I it made me feel like I could read her, and I might not necessarily love her, but I could give her another chance. I feel, I feel more like forgiving of it now that I know it was her debut, because I always thought that this was like coming after Eleanor. And yeah, Fangirl that's a. Uh, so I um before we go on to to some wow, of wow, she books, stopped working on that. She um uh, part of the little thing about this, she had a baby while writing attachments, and so she stopped working on the manuscript for two years. Wow. That's a that that's a gap. Be, yeah, I mean, be hard to get back into. I, when I was writing something, I took a couple of months off. Getting back was like, oh no, where am I? Yeah. And you just feel so overwhelmed. So that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, it seems like you almost have to start over. Ooh. Uh, I put I put this out to uh, Twitter and Facebook, seeing what any of our any of our listeners had thoughts on it. Uh-huh. Got a few responses. Uh, one Facebook user Carly says, "Eleanor and Park and attachments are on my to read list. I like the summaries of all of her books. I just haven't gotten around to them yet." And I think that that's. That's tr- they do always sound interesting to me. Yeah, you know, like flipping through. We I've done a couple for book clubs, uh, three actually, three. That's crazy. Yeah, for book clubs now. You're becoming a rainbow row expert. Yeah. And I'm always, I do always get won over by those summaries. Yeah. So I think that she she comes up with clever premises. Yeah. And, and I think maybe in attachments it didn't quite uh, land. Yeah. Like she wanted it to, didn't but land line. Yeah, because that's another one of the books. Yeah. That's another one of the books. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's good. Hey. So, Fangirl, which she published in 2013, right? Yeah. She actually wrote the first draft of it in 2011 oh. as part of National Novel Writing Month. Hey. Remo. And our library was a station for that this last yeah, year. it was. Who knows so what Fangirl cool. quality book was written at that library? All right. So, Eleanor and Park came next, uh, published chrono- chronologically, uh, two years after... Attachment. So the first in her YA books, Eleanor and Park. So Eleanor and Park is the one that uh, we both just read yep. most recently. Book club on it, Tuesday the 12th at 6.30. Uh, and, you know, as I think about it, you're probably right. Eleanor and Park probably is the, the bigger of the two. Well, it's on... Between me and girl. I, it made uh, Rolling Stones uh, top 40 YA books that you should read. Okay. Uh, it's... I mean, you can tell why. Uh-huh. Like, it's one of those books that people are like, this is the YA book to define YA, you know? It's, it deals with some hard subjects. Yeah. Uh, it's a romance. Uh, are all her books romance? Fangirl is that is that also a romance? I actually haven't read Fangirl. That's okay. that's one where I'm, I don't know it too well. You know what? I didn't like Eleanor and Park, but I think I could. I'm still gonna read Fangirl. Okay. You know, nothing about Landline makes me want to pick it up, but Fangirl I'll read. Okay. So now with, for me, Eleanor and Park was I it was it was. It was raw, you know. It was, mm. I mean, there, Eleanor's, raw. Eleanor's just in such a terrible, abusive 
relationship um, with her, her, her family. I mean, she's yeah. an abused child. Yeah. You know, and she's just sort of out there by herself. And I mean, it's, it's upsetting, oh. you know, I mean, it's a, it's upsetting to read. So yeah. that was, it was hard for me to want to read it because yeah. I just, I made my skin crawl. Yeah. You know, it was like, I just can't, I just yeah. can't read this. And I'm glad that I did because I do feel like, um, uh, especially with given the the critique that we just gave attachments, I feel like the ending to Eleanor and Park is very well done because I yep. think that I think that we won't spoil it, but I think that they she could have gone a direction that's very romantic and unbelievable, but I think she went into m- maybe in some ways a less satisfying yeah. but more realistic ending, and I think that was a very mature choice. And I'm glad that she did that because that's really what won me over. I thought it ends very well. Okay. So, for me, it was good. And you, and you, the writing, you feel like. Well, it was good. Uh, I didn't like it. Okay. It was like sitting at a dinner table knowing there's a bomb under, yeah, the, it's true. under the table. You, it doesn't matter how well prepared the dinner is. It doesn't matter how delicious it is. You're not going to be able to focus on it. You're just going to be freaking out about the bomb and waiting for it to explode. Yeah. You're going to be stressed out. You're going to be in a bad mood. And reading that book made me angry. Every time I put it down... I had to tell my wife that I had just, you know, I, oh, I, I read Eleanor in Park today. So she's like, oh, great. Yeah. So well, it's, it's just, it's frustrating because you are just waiting for it. I, I just can't deal. I just can't read that stuff. It's, it's after reading that, I'm like, I'm finishing this and now I'm just going to read sci-fi and fantasy yeah. for the next couple <laughs> yeah, yeah, of months because yeah, yeah. I can't, well, the, I mean, I think the can't most do any more of this. element of that is uh, Eleanor's stepfather, Richie, yeah. because you just, like you say, I mean, it's it's a time bomb. Yeah. You know that something horrible is going to happen, yeah. and they don't really give you, she doesn't give you that much information, so you don't really know in which way that's going I never gonna felt manifest, like there was anything that, uh, like, in it's a common element to have comedic relief yeah. to help you get through all that tension. I yeah. never felt like there was any release of that tension. Even at That's the end, of, even at the end, I didn't right. feel like there was a release of the tension. It's I felt a, it was just a, dragging, 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 and then that was it. Yeah, it's a it's a tightly wound spring, that's for sure. Um, uh, let me. I, did you have more? It's gonna. DreamWorks is working on turning Eleanor Park into a movie. Oh, okay. Uh, so looking looking uh, from our readers here. Looking. Uh, looking. <laughs> I don't, even... I don't know either. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Twitter user at Trip Existence says, I would say she has a way of building really nice moments with her dialogue. It feels honest and clever at the same time, which is a feat. At the same time, things I found raw and adorable in Eleanor and Park, for some reason, felt super forced and artificial in Landline. Oh. So the things he liked about Eleanor and Park yeah. are... It will be interesting to read Fangirl and see if maybe that's it. Maybe it's just she should just stick with YA. Yeah. You know? So well, I have some, I mean, landline. All right, let's talk about Fangirl. Let's talk about Fangirl. Do you have the plot of Fangirl? I don't. Okay. <laughs> I have nothing to talk about with okay. Fangirl because I haven't read it. Yeah. But if you want to read her book, Carry On, that's the book that the characters of Fangirl of. That's right. what I know. Yeah, that's right. So, but Carry On is also a standalone book. We have that in our collection. So it's like. We have all of these at our local library, all five of her books. Okay, so the so the in Fangirl, the two are obsessing about these characters, yeah. and then she spun that off and actually wrote a book about the characters from the book in a book. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's cool. That's a yeah. clever idea. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I I wonder how that works. I don't do, know. Do you know if Carrie Ann got good reviews? I feel like it didn't. I can't remember. Uh, I remember seeing it in like Publishers Weekly and stuff, and yeah. I felt like. Can uh, I also say another problem I had with Eleanor and Park uh-huh. is that it made me think I should listen to the Smiths, and then I did, and I remembered how much I don't like the Smiths. Uh-huh. That's all. <laughs> That's funny. So, oh. also, how much of an allowance does Park have that he's buying like all those comic books all the time? I got the sense that they were rich. Oh, you think so? I think His so. family, yeah. but still, that's a pretty decent allowance. Oh yeah. I mean, he's just spending it on Watchmen. Like yeah. that was a expensive book when yeah. it came out. Yeah. Dark Knight Returns. Oh, this isn't <laughs> interesting. It says Catherine and Levi from Spinoff, not Spinoff. Sorry, <laughs> Fangirl, have a uh, have a cameo in Landline. So I didn't read. I hadn't read. Oh, okay. That so I didn't catch that when Wait, it happened. Wait, do all but... of Rainbow Rowell's books take place in the same universe? Is this like the know. View Askew universe of Maybe. Kevin Smith? Yeah, possibly. 
<laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Let me let me read one of our uh, let me read one of our reader comments on Fangirl. Okay, they're a listener comment. Listener comments. You're right. Okay, so this is Facebook user Amanda. I loved every moment of Fangirl and wished it would just keep going. The tone of the book was so engaging. The interactions of the characters were compelling and seemed so real, like it was just happening in the other room while I observed. I believe in my soul that Rainbow and I would be friends. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so I was a lot, a lot of, a lot of love for Fangirl. Uh, before we move on, let me let me read one more uh, reader note. This is we got a very thoughtful, basically essay from uh, one of our regulars. Uh, this is Twitter user at Sarah Keeler B. She says I could probably write a whole essay about why I connect with her books so much, but I think it boils down to a couple things. Uh, she says there's an undercurrent to all her books that the things you like slash are a fan of matter most explicitly in fangirl but also eleanor and park so i mean they they bonded over comics and, and music yeah, see, and that was a it was the, a huge the thing about thing with them. eleanor and park that was frustrating for me is that i liked eleanor and park's romance yeah. i liked how they got together yeah. i liked their relationship yeah. i liked the ways they had to change for each other i liked all that but eleanor's home life was it just took over everything yeah, for me. So did. I felt like I couldn't, like, it should, those chapters should have been a relief, but I couldn't enjoy them because mm-hmm. I knew they were just going to turn into something. I could have used them. I felt like they got together almost too soon. Like, their relationship changed oh. sooner than I would have expected. No uh, way. If I had sat on the bus with a girl in high school who was reading my comic books, yeah. you're right. I probably you would have pounced like a jungle no, cat. I wouldn't have done no, you anything. Wouldn't. You're right. Okay. It is kind of crazy because, yeah. I would have just been like, oh, this girl, she likes reading my comic books. I should talk to her. And then I wouldn't for four years. This user comment continues, uh, most explicitly <laughs> explicitly in Fangirl, but also Eleanor and Park, and to a lesser extent, Landline, that a book or music or pop culture can be meaningful yeah. and get you through stuff. Also, I love how the drama of her plots, which can deal with tough stuff, unfolds under a layer of humor, which is kind of like life. So, But you sort of disagree with that, because you're saying that Eleanor and Park didn't have that layer of humor for you. I mean, there was humor in there, and there was funny stuff. You know, Park's family life wasn't perfect either Mm -hmm. but there was humor to get through that Mm -hmm. but no i just it's just because i was just so afraid it just it just ruined it Mm -hmm. for me okay Uh, but if you took all that out and it was just the relationship with her you know like they get together then yeah and i totally agree the the stuff you like does matter and is a huge part of people getting together like Mm -hmm. that uh with music and books and all that. Yeah. I've, yeah. I mean, I've always been like a evangelist for uh, the stuff I like, like comic books yeah. or board games or yeah. any of that stuff. And like in a way that it, I've, and I've tried to make it shown that like it matters. Mm-hmm. It's not just like, oh, I love this. It's Star Wars. Star Wars is great. But like <laughs> the things I like matter and have like defined me. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, I, I get that about that. And I, yeah, I hope to read. Fan girl should be fun. I don't know when I can read it now. She's put me off of wanting to read anything that isn't with spaceships. <laughs> so I'm sure she'll write a, a story that takes place in space and abusive parents in space. <laughs> I don't know why I laughed about that. No, I... <laughs> it sounds horrible. All right, so Fangirl, neither of us have read, but it right. was hugely critically acclaimed. Yeah. And Spawn is... It's crazy spin-off. that those two came out the same time. Yeah. Way to go, Rainbow yeah. Rowell. Yes. Well, didn't you said she wrote Fangirl in 2000? Well, right. Yes. Yeah, so well, who knows of, when she wrote Rainbow? Kind of a, uh, a Eleanor Trump Park anyway. uh, is, of course, obviously after reading it, a contested book. Yeah. Because uh, it's in YA. Oh boy, you know the language. That language. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, yeah. I know it takes place in 1986, but still. Yeah. I I don't. But I be, can't think of a book I've read that had the f word that many times in it. To be fair, though, yeah. I've I've written. We've all written public school buses yeah and that was fairly accurate oh i'm sure it's accurate yeah yeah i'm sure so, it's accurate. but yeah even that some of the sexual talk too was, Woo! Uh, yeah there was stuff was in like, there that i'm like Whoa. i there were i there were words that maybe i had known when i was yeah. a teenager but i didn't know how to spell them that no way. most the sexual stuff if i was reading this as a teenager i would not have gotten i would not have understood any of that <laughs> but so uh so eleanor and park and fangirl got quite a bit of critical acclaim yeah uh, she went back in 2014 to writing adult books, and With she landline. wrote Landline. Yeah. So Landline, the library did as a book club uh, over around the Thanksgiving Christmas time. It's set Christmas. Why, why is Christmas your dog so years. sad? I don't know. I think he wants to sit on your lap. Can he sit on your lap instead? Yeah, sure. Anyway, so Landline 
she wrote Landline, and it it is not it's not that well received. Yeah. The the most of the reviews were kind of like middle of the road, like eh, it was okay. Yeah. And it, I think I think they got away with it a little bit because the characters were television writers, so obviously, right. Um, you know, they they were a little bit more in touch with that. Okay. But it had its weaknesses. You know, it was. I I would say that it's worth reading if you're interested. It, you're not going to be like, oh, I hate this. But okay. It's not uh, it's not super strong. And you're saying that it interests you not at all. Just the concept, like, oh, I'm talking to the husband of the past. I mean, I, I use the term wish fulfillment for attachment. That just sounds like, I get it. Yeah. You know, people change when you get older. Yeah. And it's rough, but I don't know. Something open about it. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a little confusing. Oh, is Nick tired? No, I'm fine. Well, it's 9 p.m. You should be tired. I know. You have a child? Uh, you have after... a working job? <laughs> yeah. What's going on with you, man? Why, you, why can't you sleep anymore? After Landline, she uh, she contributed a story to a collection called My True Love Gave to Me, 12 Holiday Stories. She uh, said yes. an anthology, Christmas anthology, and she uh, contributed a, a short called yep. Midnights. Oh. Uh, then her, her <laughs> most like recent... Sounds like a cat there. Yeah. Wow. Her most recent full book, Carry On, Carry which on. is the spinoff of... She Fandom, also, so. uh, in 2014, she signed to do two graphic novels. I read that, yeah, that's novels. interesting. So that'll be fun to see. This year she put out a, a short story on World Book Day, uh, Kindred Spirits, oh. that, that's out there now. So uh -huh. five proper novels and then a few shorts and then some upcoming graphics yeah. and who knows. Yeah. I was reading... Let um, it be said here first... That all the books, uh, I don't know, claims that she's a uh, she's an author to look out for. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you heard it here first. Yeah. I mean, Ray Morrell is somebody to watch out for. I, I don't think that they heard it here first. She's been, you know, pretty yeah. popular for the last five years. Okay. But I mean, if you if you're looking for an author to keep an eye out on, yeah. Ray Morrell is our suggestion. Or you could read her back catalog, which was pretty critically acclaimed. Yeah. So sure. Right. Either way. But, but at the yeah, same time, sure, all the books. She, called, yeah. You if you're me. looking for a new author, new to the scene, Rainbow Rowell is our suggestion. And that this th kid is going places. That would be so relevant in 2011. Oh, sure. Well, why don't you just get on the landline and call and us call. in 2011 yeah. and say, "Hey, and Rainbow Rowell." Oh. oh, that was your baby, but it sounded that, like a ghost. I know that was scary. All right, so Rainbow Rowell, would you read more? Uh, yes. I will read Fangirl. I won't be reading Landline, but uh, <laughs> okay. I'd read Fangirl. I probably won't read Carry On. Yeah. So It's an odd thing to do. Yeah. Well, it's a different... You get a different audience. Like, if you write a straight-up fantasy novel as opposed to just somebody yeah. who likes fantasy. Yeah. It's cool. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it's the concept is cool. Yeah. It's a, it's like her biggest book, too. It's huge. Have you seen it? It's, it's like super Yeah, it looks chunky. like a Harry Potter book. I don't know if she's got... I haven't heard it about... I mean, other than the two graphic novels, I haven't heard about a new either adult well, or Well, Carry On just came out last year. Yeah, that's true. So... She's busy. Yeah, she is. She has six kids. She keeps up. Does she have six kids? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot of kids. It's not a small amount of kids. No. When My mom had five. Books. Yeah. How many books has she written? My mom? Yeah. Uh, none. Okay. All right. But I yeah, mean, so... yeah. She wrote, she's written the book on life. life? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah. I think we've all written the book on life. Isn't that romantic to think everybody has their own book on life? Yeah. That's why everybody's so stupid, because they don't have your book. Wow. Do you want my book on life? I think I know it. No. I think I've read it. No. Oh, I think I have. No. Um, so I guess, yeah, in conclusion, we like Rainbow Raw. Right? Wouldn't you say? I do. You can't say that? You I need to read Fangirl. You want to read Fangirl. You want to I mean, that review of uh, Attachments looked like I liked it a lot more than I remember liking it. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's fine. Solid three stars. Yeah. I'll pick up Fangirl. Okay. And I'll keep an eye out on well, things that come Maybe out. Maybe we should... Uh, I guess we're doing Eleanor Park. Maybe someday we'll do a book yeah, club on Yeah, down Sandra. the road. Yeah, we could do that down yeah. the road. Why not? And down the road. I'd love to pick it up. Down the road. All right, so tell me what you got oh, uh, coming up here at the David A. Howe Library. Here at... Because we're at your house. Yeah. You, want me, you want me to tell you what I've got coming up at your house? Uh, uh, sure. I'm going to drink some water because mm -hmm. I've got a very dry mouth. Okay. Still. Uh, rummage oh, through your cabinets for some cookies. Hey, speaking of my house, uh, I just watched the um, the movie version of Gillian Flynn's Dark Places. Yeah? It was okay. Oh. It's my least favorite of the three books. Okay. Gone Girl's probably the best, then Sharp Objects. You said but... that with a very, like, high, uh, airy voice. You're like, it was pretty good. Oh, okay. 
Oh. Anyway, I thought it was worth mentioning. It was. Yeah. It's kind of like it was. It didn't get the big wide release that Gone Girl did. Yeah. Uh, Charlize Theron and uh, who's the guy who plays Beast and uh, Nicholas Holt? Yeah. Charlize Theron, Nicholas Holt, yeah. and uh, uh, Fraser Crane. Jo- Joan from to say. Joan from Mad Men. I can't think what her name is in real life, but uh, Alison Brie. No. I don't know. I've never watched Mad Men. All right. Oh, you should. It's so good. Okay. We have the first couple seasons. I just watched uh, Hateful Eight. Oh, was that good? It was bloody. I bet. Uh, it was good. If, Sa- maybe we should save it for our Western episode. Oh, darn. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll tell we'll you talk, how I liked Hateful we'll Eight next, next week. Also available in our collection, though, folks. So yeah. get your hold That's how I got it. Yeah. A lot. I also rented Fargo Season 2 oh, okay. from our library. Nice. So it's, exactly it's a good place. The library? Yeah. Or Fargo? Uh, our, our library. Yeah. Fargo would be too cold. Yeah. I'm and apparently work. way too murdery. Yeah. Probably. So. Probably. Have you ever left a place because you're like, there's just too many murders here? I haven't. Okay. But. I think, I think technically moving out of my hometown, I did. Okay. So. <laughs> Actually, me too. Yeah. My hometown's got a pretty high murder number. Yeah. Uh, what do I got coming up? Let's see. I've got, <laughs> Any uh, murders? I got a couple of book clubs. Well, I don't know why for adults. So. After, after Rainbow Rowell, we're doing Cinder. Cinder That's by Marissa book. Mayer. Uh. Paige Turner's currently reading Number One Ladies Detective Agency by Alexander McCall Smith. Because? Because he's coming in October. October Woo! 20th. Mark yeah. your Happy Halloween! The Contemporary Classics Book Club, Hard Country by Michael McGarity. Okay. When is he coming uh, in October? October? Beginning or October end? 20th. Okay. Because we, when we had Joyce Carol, she came like the very beginning. She did. And... Yeah, I just wanted to celebrate Halloween, but you were like, no, Joyce Carol Oates! That's right. That was exactly so, like that. Uh, I guess now... Are you already planning your Halloween like reads and movies right now? You yeah, whenever are. I walk the dog, I just try to make sure I have three or four. Yeah, okay. In my head. Good thinking. Sometimes I, yeah. uh, well, the, well, we're doing Dean Coon's Frankenstein this year for the book yeah. club. And so. you and I, personally, we are, doing pet are reading Pet Cemetery. We are reading Pet Cemetery. If we don't, we can't be friends anymore. I know, anymore. I understand. No, we can't be friends. So How years, you feel about so. superhero movies, that's why we can't be friends anymore. Oh, yeah. Right. So. Right. There's never enough, Nick. I know, yeah. Uh, we got a few few fun things coming up in the auditorium. We're, uh, we're screening. What's our next movie? Monkey Kingdom. No. Bride and Prejudice. No. Oh, yeah, Bride and Prejudice. <laughs> Bride and Prejudice, fr- Friday at 6.45. Yeah. The following Saturday, so this coming Saturday, the 16th, I want to say, we're showing uh, Song of the Sea, Studio Ghibli film, 10.30. Nope. Nice try. That was disgusting that you said that. Not Studio Ghibli. It's an Irish film. Really? Yeah. Song of the Sea. The poster said it. Oh, gosh. Well, listeners, I didn't make this poster, but I can tell you right now, Song of the Sea is not a Studio Ghibli I'm film. I'm sorry. Studio Ghibli is a Japanese... Uh, animation company yeah. that has created such beloved films as Spirit Away and Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah. Song of the Sea is by the same company that did Secrets of Kells. Okay, well, whatever. Maybe they were just maybe they were just quoted on the front of it. Studio Ghibli says Song of the Sea is great. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. We're showing the animated film Song of the Sea Saturday at ten thirty in the auditorium. <laughs> uh, Friday it's... is coming Friday six forty five. We're showing Bride and Prejudice. Uh, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So if you're uh, if you're listening to us on the Angelica Radio Station, you missed it. But Wednesday the thirteenth at seven o'clock, uh, our old friend Craig Brack's coming back to and talk about backyard birding in Allegheny County. His and his, his time talks are always uh, fun, so. on Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, and different his own Brack. show, The Brack Different Brack, Brack. thank you. Oh. We got our, our tech labs. Uh, you can sign up for appointments Wednesdays and Fridays between 10 and 12. Yeah. What else you got? Anime Club, Wednesday nights. Anime Club, Wednesday nights. I just said that. Uh, six, oh, 5.30 yeah. on Wednesday nights, That's every right. Wednesday. Uh, we've got our teen photography show. We're collecting ph- photography this week. Yeah. So bring it in if you're a teenager and mm-hmm. you uh, or you know a teenager, have them bring it in. And then um, we're showing Monkey Kingdom. Monkey Kingdom on Earth Day. Yeah, on Earth Day. Narrated by Eric's crush, Tina Fey. Uh, I don't have a crush on Tina Fey. That's Please ridiculous. don't bring that up because if she's yes, listening, that's going to be very embarrassing. If I did, that would be crazy but believable, and it would make sense. And you know what? I think she'd be flattered. I think she would, too. Uh, anyways, um, Secret of Kells uh, and Song of the Sea is Ke- written. Keenan and Kells. <laughs> It's by Cartoon Salon. It's an Irish animation film okay. television. If right. you were to watch Secret of Kells and just pause any frame of that movie, it's the most beautiful image you've ever seen. Wow. Yeah. And that's, I stand by that. That's great. So also Archer. If you pause pause the show Archer the, at any time. FX show Archer. It it just looks great. That is a show whose animation just looks great. Wow. So yeah. That's it. That's Anything a else? Yeah. All the books nights, volume yeah. three. What are you gonna do this week? This week? Yeah, like personally. Are just, you going to have any big personally? moves when we meet next week? 
I don't think so. I'm going to the vet. I got a busy week this week. We got book club. I got yeah. to talk. We got a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, do we have stuff going on Thursday? I'm booked up. I did, but it was canceled. Oh, so, that's good. Yeah. Oh, my guitar lesson starts back up. Hey, congratulations! So, I'm having a hard down time. Down in music alley. Learning, learning bar chords. I'd rather turn into a puddle in you, of goo and fall down a drain and disperse into the sewer than okay. try to learn bar chords. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, I'm gonna go to the vet Saturday. Do you want to come? No thanks. Okay. Well, it's not for me. It's the dog and cat. Okay. Like I don't have to go to the vet. Yeah. I'm a person. You're your animals. I'd go to a doctor. All right. Well, uh, on behalf of all the books. Myself and Eric, we wish you a pleasant evening. Mm-hmm.